Hey, Karen and other makers. This is Dana from Big Sky Mohair Cinches. Um, Tracy mentioned this post um, where, Karen, you said you had a question about an easy start into cinch making with something like a wither strap. And I figured I'd just do a super short video kind of showing how we tackle this. So I have my cinch frame here. I have two three quarter inch snaps. And this is, again, this is how I would do a breast collar. Um, and this is just a series of weaves back and forth. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the bottom. This is gonna be a bottom cord. I have my tail coming out top. Usually I bring out about a foot. I'm just gonna kinda dally that off on the side of my frame. And then what I'm gonna do here is all I'm gonna do is take this and I'm basically um, looping it around and around and around. So I go from a bottom cord to a top cord. I go top to bottom, top to bottom. Like I said, this is a bit of a rough video. This is something we go over in our online cinch making course um, through Be A Maker School. But again, I'm just gonna do a really quick, quick video here. I'm gonna flip that over. So you can see here, this is what gets most people mixed up right off the bat. This is a bottom cord. And now I have this one going from bottom, feeding it from back to front. And now I'm gonna go down on this other side. I'm trying to go through all my extra tails. I would start with a shorter piece than this normally, but now I'm just pulling it through. And again, we are just feeding this around and around, back and forth. Apologies for less than terrific video. I don't know where my tripod is and I can't figure out how to reverse videos while I record either. So back to front, here we go again. Much easier to start with a shorter length of cord than a longer one. And again, we're feeding it from the bottom to the top on one side and then the top to the bottom on the other side. See, I'm just pulling this through. Okay, so now I have two cords on the bottom, two cords on the top. My next one is going to be a bottom cord. And like I said, we, we do go over all this. I, I do understand, um, you know, folks wanting to get their feet wet a little bit before they invest in the craft. So this is just a very basic crash course. And on winter straps, I usually do them like nine or 11 strands wide. So right now this is considered a five strand. We've got three rows, three strands on the bottom and two on top. So, so far that's a total of five. Um, I'll go, I'll go all the way to nine. I'm just going to try to work faster. So this video hopefully posts and is not too long. Who am I to, let's see, hopefully I didn't, I might've buggered that up. Three and four. Oh no, I think we're okay still so far. Oh no, I got something backwards somewhere. Oh rats. Okay, let's see. Real life learning. <laughs> we, we don't always get it the first try. Okay, so what I'm looking at and the way I knew I had that threaded wrong is because I have, I'm going from back to front here on this opposite corner, I also need to be back to front. So now, since this is back to front, I know I need to feed this one front to back. The goofy part about these swivel snaps is, is they like to move on you sometimes. All right. There we go. Find my little tail again. Back to front. I'm going to pull all this through and I'll Point it out again. I think I'll I'll actually stop here after all. Oh, there we go. One, two. So the way I know we have this strung correctly is on both my corners, I have bottom to top coming out. Okay, and then the same thing in this opposite corner. So this so far, it does have a tendency to want to twist a little bit, is 
one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be a seven strand wither strap. Okay. And so now when we want to weave our ends in, and there's videos on YouTube for this as well, but basically you're feeding the back layers to the front and the front layers to the back to form your weave. This is a very, very rough example. I would be doing a much tidier job of this if this is actually going to be a wither strap, but you're going top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, feeding your tail through, bringing your weave down, bringing it back across. Okay. Like I said, this is a rough video. So we do that a few times. And I would have these little ends tied off and all that. I don't want to tie this too tight because I don't want the buckle sitting crooked because that's, as I form my weaves, that's going to throw things off a little bit. But again, these this woven stuff, all it is is a matter of going back and forth and back and forth. And then you can take a needle and you can feed back through these weaves. And then the same thing on this side. As you're doing breast collars and woven cinches and stuff like that, it can be a really good idea to set your buckles to at least at least a half to one inch bigger than what you want because as you form these weaves there's going to be some shrinkage as you work so you want to go a little bit if you want the end product to be 18 inches end to end you might start off with an extra half inch on each side knowing that each of these weaves are going to shrink it a little bit so hopefully that's helpful um yeah i'll try to get this to load like i said this is super rough super super rough really tidy i don't i don't usually advocate for people to like lean over and work hunched over because it's hard to get nice neat tidy work um but because i can't find my tripod we're just gonna call this good enough to hopefully give you a general sense of uh what's entailed with making something like a, a wither strap so um take care happy making and don't hesitate to reach out for questions um yeah about this or the bee maker school stuff because we're we're happy to have people in class and we do zoom calls for help as well so take care bye